So today we're going to um, continue our work on uh, non-conservative energy. So you guys all remember when we did um, uh, when we talked about five minutes of, of uh, about energy, um, and the main thing about this idea of conservation of energy, right? So we have you know that that the energy at the beginning is always equal to energy at the end, and that basically you have this kinetic energy plus potential energy at the beginning equal to kinetic en energy plus potential energy at the end. But of course, we all know that there's a, there's a there's a problem with this, uh, which is um, what happened in friction? And we know the friction exists. We know that it, that, it, um, that that we see it every day. Um, and in fact, if we go back to one of our old uh, videos, uh, the bar slide one. You notice, of course, that uh, that it came to us, the, the, the 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 bar or the uh, glass came to a stop after a while. Of course, the reason that it came to a stop was because of friction. We actually calculated this in the last uh, the last class. I'm going to go ahead and show you another way that we can calculate this, and, and kind of an easier way to get at this with our energy, and also that we actually get some extra information from from doing this calculation from the energy standpoint. Um, and hopefully, it'll, get, it'll help to to make you understand how we deal with friction and how we deal with what are called non-conserved forces, basically forces that can't be captured uh, by the conservation of energy equation. So first let's, just, let's remind ourselves of a little bit of uh, the problem. Um, and the last, in, in the problem, the last time I did the bar slide, there were a couple of things that we found out. First was uh, we found out actually that we found the initial velocity was about, um, uh, I think it was um, uh, uh, two, two meters per second. Um, and again, go ahead, go ahead and look at that 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 old um, that old video if you if you don't remember how we did this. Um, <coughs> and the um, it, we didn't find this out in the the last uh, video, but I, I'm going to just say that the mass of the glass um, is about uh, about a half a kilogram. I, I'm sure that's relatively close. Um, uh, and again, remember what we're trying to find. Basically, we we have the glass starting um, someplace here with with some velocity v. And then uh, it ends, you know, it basically stops at some time later. Um, and basically what we're trying to find is the force of friction and the coefficient of friction, things like that. Um, so again, what we want to do kind of is, is set up, you know, again, it's an energy problem. So we want to start with this equation, right? Um, and what we want to do is say that, well, this is equal to kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial. And that's equal to... Um, the kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. Um, and of course, if we set y equals zero at the ground, we actually don't have any potential energy at either place. And of course, at the end, there's no velocity, so there's no kinetic energy either. But then you end up with this weird equation which says that the kinetic energy initial is equal to zero, which we know isn't true because we know it's starting with some velocity. So obviously something weird is happening. Well, what's happening is that we've done non-conserved work. Basically, we've taken energy and put it into a uh, work um, that, uh, that 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 basically isn't uh, isn't part of the system anymore. And of course, in this particular case, what we've done is there's we put it into friction. Basically, as the glass slides along, it it deposits energy into both the glass and the uh, and the table in in in, in the form of heat. Um, and so we need to account for that. We're just going to account that for that by just putting an, an extra term that says work non-conserved. And so what we're going to say is that, well, what happened to all that kinetic energy that started here? Um, all that kinetic energy, I didn't make that better. All that kinetic energy went into this non-conserved work. All right. And the great thing is that work non-conserved has the same, uh, the same equation as all other uh, work does, which is that it has a equation of force times distance. In this case, the force is the force of friction. Um, and the distance is just how far it traveled. And again, in that last video, we said that the, the distance it traveled was about one meter. And so now we have a more interesting equation, which says that basically all this kinetic energy that we had at the beginning, this goes into the force of friction and distance. And it's important to note that, um, that it, the energy doesn't disappear. Again, what this is, is the force of friction times distance. This energy is actually getting, tr is, is getting turned into thermal energy, and that's often what happens in non-conserved um, work. So 
Um, we can go ahead and find this directly. So if we have one half, if we say the mass is 0 0.5 kilograms, and that the velocity was two meters a second at the beginning, um, and that's squared. Sorry, my pen seems to be malfunctioning today. Okay. Um, uh, then that's just equal to the force of friction, but then we can um, times distance, but we can divide the distance back over here. Say so travel one meter. And if we go ahead and calculate that out, we get that the force of friction is uh, four times, a fourth is basically just, just one, um, one newton. If you multiply that all out. Um, and so you just get the force of friction is equal to one newton. Um, you also can get, uh, uh, you know, if you if you wanted to find uh, the the, um, the coefficient of friction, we know that the force of friction is also is always equal to um, uh, is always equal to the normal force times mu. And in this case, we happen to have to be one of those special cases uh, where the normal force is equal to gravity. So we just get that mu is equal to one. Uh, Newton divided by um, uh, divided by uh, the force of gravity in this case, which is mg, so 0 0.5 kilograms times uh, let's say just 10 um, for uh, for gravity meters per second squared. And then when we do that all out, we get that um, mu is equal to 0 0.2, which is exactly what we got before. Um, so uh, so again, nothing nothing too. Um, too surprising, we get the same answer either way we do it. The the interesting extra bit of information that we get in this case, if you go back here, um, let's let's look here. If we go back here, we see that um, the work non conserved um, basically uh, all gets turned into, or, or actually even even if we go back a little further, we see that the work not basically all the kinetic energy is is turned into work non conserved. And so we can find actually how much energy we've lost um, by just calculating uh, one half mv squared, uh, one half times zero point five times two squared, and uh, yeah, let's, um, uh, that's uh, let's make let's get our units in there, kilograms and uh, two meters per second squared, and we get um, and we end up getting. Uh, an answer of again um, one uh, kilogram meter squared per second squared, which is also equal to one joule. Um, and so what ends up happening, and that's that's equal to the work not conserved. So what happens is basically we turn a joule of energy um, that was originally kinetic energy into into heat, basically into heat energy. And you know we could we could go through and, and eventually what we'll start doing is we'll start determining well how much does it actually heat up the glass and how much does it heat up the table and so forth. But for now, let's just be happy with knowing that we can basically deal with uh, with energy uh, with energy and friction at the same time simply by using what's called this non-conserved work. And again, the only addition is or the only interesting thing is, is that we add this non-conserved work. Um, over here, um, and you're going to have to be a little careful about where to um, where to add it. But it, it, it's actually pretty obvious in most cases. Again, in this case, you know that the work not conserved had to be over on that side because you got you had something the kinetic energy in this case on the left side and nothing on the right side. So then you knew that it was something that had to be added. Uh, basically, the, there was lost kinetic energy, and so that's um, that's an easy way to to see that. Um, so. Uh, I hope that was useful, um, and uh, if you have any questions, please bring them to class, and we'll talk about it then.